after somebody has been exposed, generally people develop symptoms if they're going to be a person who develops symptoms within about five to seven days. That's variable depending upon the person and depending upon each person's immune system. There are many patients, about 80% who are infected, who have extremely mild or even asymptomatic cases. Those patients, even though they're relatively asymptomatic, may still be infectious. But if somebody gets infected and does develop symptoms, they generally go through certain phases of the disease. The first phase of the disease, which is generally the first seven to 10 days or so, is what we call the viral phase. One of the things that we recognize is that at the beginning of the infection, you may have a very high viral load. That is the amount of virus in your system. When people are in mostly the viral phase and we know the virus is replicating, we use antiviral medications to stop the virus from replicating and prevent the person from feeling ill or getting sicker. Patients developing symptoms most commonly will develop fevers or chills, aches and pains, cough or diarrhea. And it's actually in the days before they develop symptoms, predominantly the 48 hours before they develop symptoms, that the virus is at its highest load and those people are actually the most infectious to others. And that is why we have to always use universal face masking, social distancing, and hand hygiene, the viral load then starts to trickle down over the next seven to 10 days. And generally within 10 days after somebody has developed symptoms or tested positive, they are no longer as infectious to others. Now in many patients, at the end of that seven to 10 days, they'll eventually start to get better. But in some people, we know that at the end of the seven to 10 days, instead of improving, they essentially get much, much sicker or crash clinically. Later on, if you develop more severe symptoms, it may not be the virus itself, but actually the exaggerated immune response against the virus that's causing damage to your organs. And that's generally when people become very sick and require ICU care, may require supplemental oxygen, or even mechanical ventilation to help them breathe. Unfortunately, for those patients who are more advanced and have had the illness for longer, antiviral drugs may not hold as much promise and treatment of symptoms from the overwhelming inflammatory cytokine response may be more critical.